me on Facebook. And he was like, you're really pretty. I see that you model. I have my own little company thing or whatever. Um, you know, we, we take pictures of females, you know, put them on magazines and all that good stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, perfect. So we made an appointment or whatever. And I went down to the studio. We shot like a cute little video or whatever. He posted that on YouTube. Um, we did a full photo shoot. And from there, you know, we started becoming friends, like, because we work together now, you know, kind of like, you know, and also he would promote me like he, he would like promote me like for parties and get me booked and stuff like that. So he was he turned into like a great asset, you know, um, a good connection to, to people and stuff. And that's where it started. We was actually friends for like years before we even got serious. Are you there, honey? Honey? Hey, now. Okay. You said what? Yes, he, he messaged me on Facebook and I guess because I had modeling pictures because I just started modeling and he was telling me like, you're pretty and I would love to work with you and you should come down to the studio and take some pictures and, you know, it's all for free. So, of course, I'm an upcoming model, you know, I'm looking for photographers that that's just trying to do, do pro bono work, work. just, just trying, trying to, you know, put their work out there too. So we linked up with the shoot and that's how we started communicating from there. Just from... You know, just Hooking up. You said if I knew him virtually before we met in person. Um, it was like a week because we because when he messaged me, we planned it for like the the next weekend and the next weekend I'm, I went to his studio and we did the and everything. So it was like a week before I met him. No, he probably messaged me like twice after that, just to make sure like, you know, I'm, I'm ready for the photo shoot and, you know, stuff like that or pertaining to. Yeah. Um. Um, I would say like 25. He told me that he was younger than me. So I think he told me he was like 23. Because the whole time I thought I was older than him. Because he, he told me that he was younger than me. And I'm like, oh, you better respect your elders. I always remember telling him that. Because I remember him telling me, that he was a younger age than I was. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, let me see. If I was 25, 26, 27, 27 he was 29. Because he's four years older than me. And it seems like this is his, this is his characteristic. This is what he tells everybody, that he's younger than what he really is. He's 37. I said, currently he's 37. About to be 38 this year. Okay, so um, we met for another photo shoot and you know, we end up having sex that day. Um, and then from there on, it became a, a, where every time I would do a photo shoot, we would, we would have sex. And he would tell me things like, I want to be with you. I want to marry you. I love the 
for being with you. I love how you you wear your hair. I love how you everything about me. He did love, and it's like you know he was. It, I felt like he was so perfect because he was so sweet. He was so kind. He was so given. He always wanted to buy stuff for me. If if, like if I went to the corner store and bought a bottle of water, he would come out of nowhere with money on the counter. Like where you came from? Like he don't want me to pay for anything. Like, he was. Hello, really daddy. She. He was like really really sweet. I was in a relationship with my with my with my kid's father, right? And so, huh? He knew that because that's who I would talk to about my relationship when I wasn't having like enjoying my relationship because I was going through some stuff and I would tell him about it. And I think. You know, that that too made him realize how vulnerable I was, and that's when he probably started with the treating me really nice and trying to just be what the other dude wasn't. It never got serious. Um, after like a few sessions, let's call it a session, um, we, we lost connection. We disconnected because I think he, he never really had a home because like he would never invite me to his house or invite me some. Oh, thank you so much. He never really invited me anywhere. It was always at a hotel. Like he would book a room. So, but um, I figured that he had nowhere to live because would always go from state to state you know so we lost connection and then i ended up moving from new york also so he moved to New York, i moved and we lost connection and then like i would say like five or six years later yeah let me see 25 yeah like five years later yeah we rekindled and um, I, I, I was in New York, and I think I posted an Instagram saying that I'm in New York, and he messaged me. He said, you need to hook up. I'm like, okay. And at that time, the relationship that I was in, um, I broke up with the person. And yeah, about five years, yeah. Yeah, and then he messaged me. Sorry. We linked up, and um, he was he was doing um this job driving RVs for celebrities. So he would. Hey, Guys, you have a I'm sorry. I have just interject for a little bit because I have to go. Tell Chuck stop gifting you. You guys are in the same. Your percentage is already fucked. It's already fucked. You have to offset it. You don't take nothing from no bird right now. No bird. Is why everybody got their bird. I know he trying to help. He will steal. He will steal your coffin. Like the coffin is already sealed, and we need to try to open up. Okay. Do it from a fufu or something. That that is it. That is it, Pasta. It is that that is it. Or like or let her, let her catch a time. You can get beans like you know. You can get like in seconds. Just do your time. Just do your time, and then later on, we we see where we at, and we do what we gotta do. You no, know? because then when you off when it's fucked up already like that, then you'll be working harder. Like just push and see where you at generically, and then on the like the last week, then we can like do whatever. Yes. Okay. That's why I can't. You know, if I get, if I drag in you, you, you out. Like, we would just that. be wasting money. All right, yeah. guys. Keep it pushing. Let me drop a bag. I gotta go. And uh, um, what's his name? Chop Sassy got fired, so you can't go to her for nothing. She did She did not go out well. I'm not going to speak on it, but I'm going to say it was not amicable. 
she crossed the line. And y'all know I ride for Sassy. Y'all know I ride for Sassy, right? She crossed the line. She's out. I think I have to take Grack out too. I can't have your dude. No, I don't. I, like, yeah. So if it's anything, you have to come straight to me. Um, Yeah, she's right there. That too. Chap was like, Rasta keep messing with time tree. I think Sassy fired. I'm like, no, she's not. Sassy's a good worker. <laughs> he said that. Yeah. Oh, she's a good worker until she wasn't. He said, Rasta keep changing the time tree. She probably, she probably fired Sassy. <laughs> I'm like, nah, Sassy, uh-uh. Well, I'm, I'm she violated. Wrong. She violated. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. And she, she's great. She's trained by the best. Because she fucked up. So, Sassy want to fret me. Sassy, well, I don't want to talk about it. Um, Because I, if I hear her talk on me, it, it's going to be on. So, I can't speak on her. No. Yeah. She, that no longer works for the agency. Doesn't matter why. She can't help you. Like, you gotta, you can come to me. Uh, I don't have a replacement. And I think people must be forget that I do this. I think that I believe, like, she's good because of me. <laughs> so we'll be alright. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, well. It'd be the people closest to you that can hurt you. It's never your enemy, it is your friend that will hurt you. Your yeah. enemy can't hurt you. They're not close enough to hurt you. That's so true. Okay. Thank you, Rasta. Yes, um, I had broke up with my current boyfriend at the time. The same one who I was with when I cheated on him in the first place. Um... I broke up with him. Like I said, we was going through problems. You know, he was the one that I would talk to about him. And I just finally left him after that little break of him. After that little five years of him with, with him. Um, right. So I went back to New York because um, I got booked for a snake show. And like I said, I posted it and he seen it. And he was like, oh, you in New York? Let's link. So we linked up. He came, he had like the RV. And he was like, you picking up celebrities, which I seen on his Instagram. He had people come law and order, like, driving them around to their set, like all that shit. Like, was... So, huh? Oh, no, I, I didn't even know he was going to do Okay, there we go. Yeah, real life shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, he would pick up celebrities. He would drive the RV. I guess it's like a family. Like one of his family members put him on. So he worked for a company that, that works for celebrities. They drop them to their scenes, and then they pick them up and drop them back. Pretty much, we fucked on the RV. And he was like, um, French Montana was the last person that was in there. And we fucked on a bed that French Montana was sleeping in. It was kind of awesome. But... But that night, we did not use any condom because, but, but this is something he always used to do. It's like every time we would link up, he would always say that he don't have none. But it's like, how you never have none? Like, you know what I mean? But that day, he didn't have And we did the course. And I told him, you better not end me. And he's like, nah, nah. So we did what we did or whatever. And I just kept feeling like something running out. And I'm like, damn, he got me but in my mind, I'm like, I have two kids already. Like, I know what that is running out. So, but I didn't, I didn't pay no money. I'm like, ah, he, I, I doubt he would do that shit. Okay. Girl, like, I would say four weeks later, I started feeling like a pain under my left, like right in your groin. So I called my best friend and I'm like, girl, my stomach hurt. Like, you know, I had sex with him and da, da, da. And she was like, girl, he gave you something. You better go to the doctor. She'd be always jumping to the worst. She's like, he gave you something. You better go to the doctor. I went to the doctor that same day when she was like, you better go to the doctor. Went to the ER. I made up some lie. I told them, I think I was vomiting and my stomach hurt. I just made it up yesterday so they could check me. And the doctor came back and he was like, he's positive. 
I'm like, positive for what? He was like, he was like, I'm like, I'm pregnant. I started crying. He was like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. Like, you see me crying? I'm no. And it, my life is like, what the hell? So I got back to the house. I called this man. No, I texted him. I texted him and I said, I'm pregnant. He said, what? I said, I'm pregnant. He was like, call me. So I called him from my grandmother's phone, but I blocked the number. So he like, why are you block your number? I'm like, because oh, it's my granny number. I just don't want to call you from her number. So he was mad because of that and blocked me. So I never heard from him my entire pregnancy. Never heard from him, right? So it was, huh? The moment I told him I was pregnant, he was gone. I just told you that. He was gone. He blocked me. Okay? Because I told him, um, you know, I, I'm calling from my granny number and I didn't want to show her number. So he felt offended by that. And he hung up on me and he blocked me from social media. Every, I'm like, what the? So within that time now, my other, my, my ex boyfriend, who I had originally, you know, parted from, ended up rekindling because he came to New York trying to get his girl back, trying to get his family back. So now I'm pregnant. So. I'm like, I'm pregnant. He like, you're pregnant. I didn't come in you. I'm like, I'm like, it's for so and so. He was like, I'm gonna kill that nigga and I'm gonna kill you. And he like, you better go get rid of that baby. I'm like, I ain't getting rid of shit. And then I was like, it ain't his, it's yours. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I guess I didn't want to die, bitch. I'm like, nigga, it's yours. You stupid. So we went the whole pregnancy with him thinking it was his baby, right? Like, pregnancy was the worst because it's like, I never been through that before. Being pregnant for another man and you were another, like, that was just all new to me. You know what I mean? And then I was like, you know what? This is why you really can't judge females because look at me. Like, I hear women getting pregnant and having sex with other men, but you don't know the situations because I was one of them. You know, like my baby father came back, he's trying to work it out, and you know, and we just end up rekindling. And I had to lie and say it was so the baby was born, he put his name on the birth paper, the baby has his last name. So I'm scrolling on social media and I see his picture, but it wasn't like his 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 Instagram, it was a girl's Instagram. So I clicked on Instagram and she has this whole article about him being locked up for rape. And I'm like, what the hell is this? So, great. And I was pregnant. So, I looked at the post and I'm and I'm just gonna figure it out. Okay, so then I message her, you know, you have to have some balls because I'm like, I don't know these girls, I don't know who they are, but came to find out that's one of his baby mothers. So when I message her now, she was really nice. She was nice to me and she was just telling me her story, which was a horrible story with the both of them. So she was telling me the story and then she told me about him being a rapist. So I can't remember how I got in contact with him. Oh, I do. One of a mutual friend of ours, who was actually the godmother of the kids, of his, my kids, um, she actually reached out to him and she was like, yo, she got a baby by you. Like, y'all got to work it. Like, you got to talk. So he decided, okay, let's talk. And we end up. She already knew because I was still stripping when I was pregnant. I was still in the strip clubs. Five months pregnant, you didn't even know. Because when I even told her, I'm like, I'm pregnant for him. She was like, how much months are you? I said, five months. She said, five months or five weeks? I'm like, five months. Because you didn't see anything. I was flat. And, and plus, so, you know, it, it wouldn't look like anything. <laughs> so she one that said, you know, she's going to reach out and she's going to talk to him. And because there's a baby involved. So we spoke or whatever. Huh? Hmm. 
Yeah, so um, like I said, the friend rekindled the situation. So we spoke. And I guess I was saying, if you want a, a, a fucking infinity test, like, we could do all of that because I don't need you all here in the streets saying I'm lying on your dick because that's the last thing I'll be doing is lying on niggas' dick. So he was like, no, you don't have to get no test. I know it's mine. I know it's mine. Okay. So mind you now, when I heard that, I had another mutual friend, which was a, a guy, who I, I ended up telling the whole story to. And he was like, yeah, he called me. And he told me that he know you pregnant and you don't even know you pregnant because he know he did this and he know he did that. I'm like, what? So you know that I could have got or I could have been. So you did that on purpose. Because now a whole other dude is telling me everything that he shouldn't know. What he did on purpose is what it boils down to. Okay? He did what he did on purpose. So then he was like, I didn't, so he said, I don't know, I don't, you don't have to take no test because I know it's mine. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, um, you gonna send pampers or something? This nigga gonna say, what is buying pampers gonna benefit me? This is what this man said to me. I hung up the phone, I said, you know what? You don't gotta buy shit. I already been buying shit, like it's okay. So lost connection for a few months. Then the same baby mother, right? Yes, I had the baby. I had the baby. Wait, we when when we re, when we had spoke because of my friend, the girl, and she had you know like yo, y'all have a kid. This was after the because remember I didn't see him the whole pregnancy. It was after the baby. The friend was because she know I don't want her to go back. I don't like when people go tell my baby fathers and them stuff because it make it look like I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like, don't tell them niggas I said shit or don't tell them you want us to do nothing. No, because then them niggas gonna think I'm I'm the one that's putting that in your shit to say it. So she was like, no, I'm gonna say something because I'm your friend and that's my goddaughter. I'm gonna say something. So she said something and then I guess it worked because we ended up talking, like I said. And I was like, you, you we can have a paternity test if you want to because, you know, I don't want niggas out here saying it ain't a kid. He was like, no, I would never say that. That's Kid, I know it was my kid. And like I said, I remember the conversation I had my homeboy, our mutual friend, who told me how he told him all of that. So he already knew what he did. So when I was like, um, you're going to buy the baby pamphlets? And then it was like, buying pamphlets is not going to benefit me. I hung up the phone and I never spoke to him again. He was texting me periodically, like he want to be with me. And like this weird random shit, right? I'm not gonna lie, I was texting back too, but I never thought it would be serious because I was in a whole different state. Like I didn't think that, you know what I mean? You just, this is my kid's father. So of course, you know, I'm still trying to hold on just a little bit, you know what I mean? Even if it's just a little conversation here and there. So then the same baby mother now that I found out on her post, she ended up messaging me and she's like, I'm in North Carolina, which that's where I was at the time because I had moved from New York. Carolina. So she comes out there and she wanted to come to Philly. She was like, um, we're going to drive out there for the night. We're going to go to a club and dance or whatever. And then we're going to drive back down to North Carolina. So when she said that, I'm like, okay, sounds good. But when I got to, to Philadelphia, I ended up getting into a big fight with somebody and I end up staying in Philadelphia for like a like a good excuse me for like a good eight months. I stayed in Philly, so I, it didn't it didn't go like it planned. I was supposed to come back in 24 hours, but I stayed. Right. So after I came to Philly, he found out that I didn't care. Time out, time out, time out, time out. 
Okay, back back to the interview. He said, "This is can fuck now, holy shit." Good reach, like y'all, y'all, y'all. I'm a small y'all. Y'all stop now, y'all gotta. So um, we went to Philly. Like I said, I was in Philly. I was staying with my grandmother at the time, of course, because you know. Well, when I when I got there and I fought, whatever, it was like day three. So it was like three days I've been there so far. And for me being there, I broke up with the with the the baby father for real, for real this time. Really, really broke up because I left the whole state. I went and I got my kids and I came right back to Philly. I was I was done. So when I was here now, when I was there for like the, the three days that I came for, I guess he found out that I was in Philly. So we we connected, right? Like I said, because we have a kid, I try to just, even if it's any any kid that I have, I will always try to communicate with their father because I'm not that type of female. You know what I mean? So because of the strength of the baby, I was they're still trying to communicate. So we started talking again and he was like let's be together because i always wanted to be with you and i wanted to marry you and all this shit he was saying right but just remember i'm in a vulnerable position because i just had a baby i just left a relationship i didn't want to be with i didn't i didn't like i wasn't happy i was everything and then this guy and he's doing everything that i want he's saying all the right things it felt it felt good you feel me so we started going out i guess you, you could say we was together now because every day he want me to come to his house every day he just popping up at my granny house so it became it became like a relationship you know so yep baby and all that so the excuse was he always wanted to see his daughter bring the baby over I need to spend the night all this and I did that I did that for a while I did that until I started seeing the red flags because when I heard about the rape stuff the first time I was pregnant now that I was with him I asked him about it I'm like yo there's a social media that say you rape somebody like can you explain that to me so he was like I'm glad you asked me that he was like a few years ago i was living in an apartment with some dude and he was pimping girls and they busted down the busted the place down and he got locked up with the dude and they was trying to give him a lot of time so he just plead guilty to get a lesser time so he was like um because i already did my time it's all over he said you could google me and then he got his laptop and he, he went to the new york city sex registry offender and he put his name in he's like see you can't find me then he went to the philadelphia sex registry and he was like see you can't find me so i'm like okay all this shit is probably bullshit because i know he a little rap right right so i'm messing up it because he proved his point you know what I mean? So, but I'm still thinking, where did she get this picture from? You know, maybe the girl that lied and said he did it. Maybe she was just a fresh young thing. You know how girls be growing up sometimes. You can't trust these girl, little girls. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe it was that type of situation. Okay, he did his time four years. He came home. His record is clean. He got to go. Whatever. I'm I'm thinking everything is good. But then it's like I started seeing red flags. Like it had one time. Okay. 
Well, it wasn't until he kept asking for my other kids to come over. And at that time, I only had all girls, you know, I, I had all girls. I had five girls to be exact. So he kept asking for them to come over and I'm a funny person. I don't even let my friends go to the, my kids go to their friend's house. Not even my own family house. Like, I don't, I just don't like, cause you know, kids get into stuff, they do stuff and then you're responsible. So I, I just rather they not go nowhere. But he kept asking, he kept asking and I still ignored. But then it came like Christmas time. And then he started giving me all the sad stories about he was adopted and his mom got locked up because she bashed him in the head and he had to get surgery. And he was in a foster home for all his life. And he was raped and all this stuff. So, you know, my heart, my heart, you know. Yeah. So he would, you know, he would tell me all these things and I would be like, okay, you know what? Let me just bring the kids. Maybe he really just never had a family. He don't know what it's like to, you know, okay. So I brought the kids over there. I think it was like a week we spent over there. And I left. No, my kids was at my friend's house. I think they, was, they spent like a couple of days over there and I had their dirty clothes. And I think I was outside in the supermarket. My kids, the girls. So right. he calls me and he was like, oh, he to wash. Um, and he about to wash their clothes. And in my head, I'm like, no, don't wash their clothes. Like, you know, kids from ages one all the way up to 14. But she wasn't one at the time. She was like, still like a couple months. Little girls' clothes, especially, you know, they might have a little poop stain and a little, you know what I mean? They're big kids. What man you know would want to wash, especially if it's not your kid? They're not even your kids. They don't, you don't even know them like that. Like, we literally just stopped talking like a few months now, like two months ago. Like, so it, that was strange to me. So I told him, no, don't leave their clothes alone. I got it. Girl, when I got to the freaking house, all my kids' clothes is hanged up, their panties. It was like more panties than clothes. And that, that is what was weird to me. I called my, I'm like, if Okay. So I called my best friend. I'm like, yo, like I told this man, don't wash their clothes. I came over and they, the clothes is washing his panties everywhere. So in my head, I'm like, maybe I'm over exaggerating. Maybe he just trying to help me because he know how I complained of before in the past. How I'll be feeling like I do everything myself. I don't get no help. I, I don't feel appreciated. So I thought maybe he's doing those things because I voiced that. Thing. So it's like I had two minds about it. But then it's like it was, but then it's, I think I went home that week because it pissed me off. Thank you. So then I went home that week and a girl that was living in the house that he was living in because he lived with another dude right lied and said that was his brother came to find out they met on the internet and now they live together but the girl that was dating the dude he was living with she called me and she was like how he was having a conversation with her about how my kids are shaped and mind you at that time my daughter could have been like 12. so 12 go all the way down the babies so what grown man would sit there and talk about oh she got a skinny butt she got a butt like her mom she got a butt like this like what and i'm listening to this girl telling me this like oh hell no right oh hell no so that turned into like a little conversation me and him had and he was like he never said that he never so pretty much he, he said the girl lied but i know she's not gonna lie because we here I know that she's sane and I know she's not going to make some shit like that up because we done sat in that house together, smoke blunts, shared stories. So I know she's not going to just come out of nowhere to just lie on him for nothing. You know what I mean? But she see what I was going through and she, I guess she decided to just voice what she heard and what she saw and the conversation that they had. So I stayed away. I stayed away from him for days. Yeah. 
Yep. So, yeah, so then now, I guess like a week or a few days might have passed, maybe almost a week. And I asked him if um, he could get me some, no, he, he said to me that he was going to get the baby pampers because I was the one always getting it. So he was like, this, this month, I'll, I'll get the pampers. So I'm like, okay. So when it was time for the pampers, I called him, I'm like, you got the money for the pampers? Oh, he don't got no money for the pampers. So I got mad. I'm like, you told me to come to you when I won the pampers. So, I, you know, I hung up the phone on him and I left the house. I said, you know what? I got my food stamps card, okay? Um, my best friend, she had the link to where she could go to the corner store. She could get food. She could get pampers. She could get wipes with the food stamps. So she took me and we got the pampers. My oldest daughter calls me and said that this man is in my house talking to my grandma. And I'm like, why? Like, why is he, why is he there? So I guess he wanted to come to the house to see I guess what the house looked like, or he just wanted to talk about it. That was the conversation that they had, was me and me alone. Him and my grandmother was just talking about me. So I called him. I said, you just left my house? Why the fuck is you there? Like, you, you, you couldn't buy Pampers, but you coming over there. So he was like, I know I came to bring the Pampers. I'm like, but why? Like, you made me argue and go through all of that, and for you to say no, for you to come bring it anyway. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, who communicates like that? Like, who acts like that? So when that happened out, I had his card, like his, his, um, his bus pass. So when he did that pamper shit, I'm like, you got me fucked up because my daughter was recording him talking to my grandmother. So I was like, send me what you, what, you know, the recording. So then she calls me back and she was like, oh, he took her phone and deleted it, deleted it. I'm like, how you, he take your phone and granny right there, like this man take your phone. He don't pay your phone bill. How he taking your phone? Because he see her recording him so when I called him I said why are you touching my daughter's phone for he was like because she was recording me and I don't know what she was doing I'm like but who you think you are you you she can record what she want to record who the hell do you think and you inside her house so so that turned into an argument he started calling me a bum ass bitch and all this shit I'm like I'm the bum you're the bum you're the one that can't even buy pampers he started sending me pictures on the internet about him holding money I'm like I was there when you took that picture. That's not your money. That's your friend money who you live with. Like you act like I wasn't there when he's like, what is you doing? Like you're retarded. So my friend ended up taking a phone for me and she started texting him. And she was like, since you're so rich, you're not getting back your bus pass, bummy. Like she was like really going in on him. Tell me why the very next morning, DHS, Protective Child Services, was at my house. The very next morning. 10 o'clock a.m. to be exact. At my door. I'm like, what? And then the lady, you know, they can't tell you who said it, but they can tell you what they said. So she was like, the person said that all you do is smoke weed, all you do is hang out with your best friend. Yeah, and that's it. And, and your grandmother doesn't like you. I'm like, that's this fool. Because he, he just said all of this to me last night. He just told me all I do is smoke weed with my best friend. He told me my grandmother don't like me. He just told me all of that last night. So I already knew it was him. Plus, who would I have beef with to do that? Like, I just got here from North Carolina. Nobody knew I was in North Carolina. I was at his, at my granny's house or I was at his house. I wasn't nowhere. Nobody knew I was there. So I knew it was him. And I'm like, how would you try to get your own? Like, I have a baby by you. You're trying to get my kids taken away and your kid too? over some campers that you said you was going to buy? And then when I called him, so I lied, right? I said the lady said it was a male. And she said and she said your name, but she said she didn't she didn't want to tell me that cuz she could lose her job. But because, you know, my situation and I was telling her about my story, she, she told me it was you. So it's just the way he reacted, like he didn't say nothing. It was like he, he didn't know what to say. Then he was like, man, I'm going to sue her. What's her name? Because it, it wasn't me and all this shit. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I told you when my daughter was born. But, but remember, I said when my daughter was born, she have my other baby father last name and his name is on the birth paper, right? So when the, the, the child services came, when I see my daughter name, London, I'm thinking to see my baby father last name, but it was 
his last name. I, so he thinks that I named my daughter after him. But I just sold him out even worse. So who would tell this lady that this child's name is London Lee? Your name is Lee, but I, you don't, he, he never knew that I didn't give the baby his last name. He thought she had his last name. So you gave them London Lee, thinking her last name is Lee. Her name is not Lee. It's not. And that's how I knew he fucked up. That right there, it was five months of being with him. That right there, when and when he did that, honey, I wanted to be extra, extra positive, right? Five months. So, because the lady told me that, right? She didn't tell me it was him, but if, like I said, she told me what the person said. She said it was a male, because of course I'm gonna say, is it a male or female? It was a male. What male I got beef with? That's gonna call DHS on me, like please. I know it was him, but because I wanted to be even more sure, I did a spiritual test, right? And the test said it was him, right? So that wasn't even out. It's no way I'm I'm a I'm gonna not believe my ancestors and my spirit guys. There's no way. So that was just that for me. I called him. I said I know it was you. You can keep lying all you want. And he know I do spiritual stuff. I said, can I come over there and do some spiritual work? If you really did not do it, and and that way I can feel more comfortable. He did not want me to. He did not want me to. And I said to him, we're over. And I guess he thought it was playing because he was messaging me like two days after that. And I'm like, can you please here just smoke by yourself? Cause I can't, I can't. And I said to him, um, leave me alone. We're done. After that, I shit you not, like about three days later, I'm getting all these messages from the same girl who rekindled us back. A whole bunch of dudes, rapper dudes, right? But before that, I, oh, but before the days i found that i was pregnant right i found out after i broke up with him i found that i was pregnant again yes like after the cps thing and i broke up with him i wasn't feeling good so i was like excuse me my, my, i missed my period and everything i'm like you know what let me go take a test took a test i was pregnant i'm like oh hell right like, that's not gonna make me go back with him. I'm done. I'm done, and I'm done. So a few days later, finding out, like I said, my my friend, my mutual friend, my homegirl, messaged me. Another rapper dude who I know pretty well that's on social media messages me, and a whole bunch of other people just started messaging me. They're sending me a whole bunch of pictures, and then they sent me a video, right? Pretty much, it's a porn of me and him. Of me and him. I body, but it's me and you. Like, I was your girlfriend, like, and your baby mother, and pregnant on top of that. Like, you, like, it was, so he's, he's sending everywhere. Huh? thing he really did was make niggas get their dicks off, to be honest. <laughs> this is where he fucked up at. Because my daughter follows me on social media, right? And he just sending videos all willy-nilly and send this shit to my 12-year-old daughter. I called the police. I made a report. Yeah. Porn don't make me feel no way. Like I have a whole OnlyFans. Like it doesn't. So he really tried it. So I, I went and I got the, the detective or whatever. They took my statement. The detective said for me to take full custody of two of my kids and just if I could leave the state leave 
And so happened, everything that was going on with my son when he was born, it was just the perfect timing. And I left, and that's why I'm in Atlanta right now. Right? But before I send the, the, the sex tapes out, he made a whole fake Instagram of me, right? And this is what he did. He posted up my grandmother's address and said, if you want to get stuff, go ahead. Mind you, I have his baby, I'm pregnant, and I have five other kids. And my fucking granny address is all over the world. Like I said, I called the police. She my little she makes me happy. So I said that I do, cause when I knew it, I knew little boys trying to holler for a couple of Yeah, my grandmother. No, I said he 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 put my grandmother's address and said if you need your dick suck, go here. Right? My granny Abby made a whole Instagram for me, girl, and put everything on there. And if you want your dick stuff, go here. Yeah. Sorry, my girl is calling me. And after, and after, after he did all of that, after he did all of that, I, I got mad. I made an account of him too, and I stopped posting. Saying he was a rapist and that he was gay. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, I. Posted him. Yes, that's that's exactly how he carries himself. Like he gets mad, like like he, he gets mad like a real girl, like on some real shit. So after all of that, I made an account myself and I started posting all types of shit about how he's gay. And I I took the girl, his, his baby mother, the same stuff that she posted about the raven. I posted that on my page too. And then a whole bunch of girls just found me and started flooding my DMs. I know him. I'm pregnant right now. He gave me an STD. I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, it was just girls coming out of nowhere. Came to find out I, I'm baby mother number nine. Number, And that's just who I, that's, that's just the baby mothers that reach out to me and we know each other now. I don't know whoever else on the half of the world that he done did that. I don't know. But these are the women that I know now. And they all, we all share the same story. He lie and say he's younger than what he is. He lies about everything. He's very manipulated. Like he, he does it to everybody, all the women. And then he tells the sad story about him being raped. I found out he was never raped. But that's what his brother, told me. His, his brother was like, he was never raped. He was the one doing the raping, but he was never raped. I'm like, he told me he was raped. He forced me. His brother said he was never raped. We was not, he, my, his brother said, me and him and our sister, all three of us, he said, I'm the youngest boy. He said, my sister's the oldest one, and we three was in foster care. Nobody raped none of us. So he had an okay life. Nothing was wrong with him. But his brother is telling me that he's supposed to be on medication. Like, I think he... Yes. But I already knew something was wrong. Because when you're around a person, you, you could, if, you're, if you're regular, you could pick up on some, like, this nigga is weird. Like, that's how I felt. But it's like, I was already too thin. So it's like, you know, I'm like, okay, how do I work around this? You know what I mean? But it was like, every time I try to work around it, some something will come up. Yeah. 
Yes. He pushed forward the charming and the loving and the caring. And, you know, he put, he want to cook for you. He want to do all, like everything. He, you don't even lift the broom up. He's going to sweep and mop. Like he's perfect. I've been sweeping and mopping all my life, nigga. I love this. I've been cooking all my life. Nobody never cooked for me. I love this. So, that, like, but I still didn't make that blind me because I had my kids and my kids is important to me. So I look past all of that bullshit, all that kindness and sweetness. I'm like, fuck that. These are my kids. And I broke up with him, like I said. And he he did all of that after I broke up. Made leaked this tape, all that fuck shit. And I left Philly. I mean, yeah, I left Philly and I, I haven't, you know what I mean? I left Philly. That wasn't last year. That was the year before. Yeah, because my son was born 2019. So yeah, because I was still pregnant. I had my son in Philly. So I waited my whole pregnancy and I had my baby. And then I left when he was like two months. I was out. I was gone. Children are back home. Yeah. I haven't. I don't know. I haven't spoken to him. All I know is some girl was in my inbox and she was with the same shit. I guess these trolls just be popping up. Right, so she just she jumped in my inbox talking about you lying on him. Why would you lie on him? I'm a victim of rape, and I'm a victim. So you should be listening to me. How you gonna listen to a man and you you would think I'm a, the mother of this man's children, and I just want to make this shit up? Like how's it sound? So she started attacking me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm a little troll. I'm about to go make another Instagram page because you you tried it. So I guess when I did that, now it got him pissed off. So now he started sending pictures off of Facebook of my 12 year old daughter at the time, the same one he sent the sex stick to, he sent pictures of her when she was like eight years old to all types of random men. Like they was, well, they ain't random, they my friends, but to him, they, he don't know them. So I had people inbox to be like, yo, what the fuck? This is not your daughter? Like, yeah, what the, who sent you that? A whole fake page. So what I did, I called the police. Yes, when it comes to kids, I'm gonna call the police. And of course, But girl, I tried. I tried because I called the detective, the same detective. And he said, because I'm in Atlanta now, is restriction shit, whatever the hell. And then I called the police and I made a report. And they said they're going to make a report saying, you know, it's harassment. But they can't do nothing because it's restriction, whatever. So the, guy, the police officer came back and he was like, he is a registered sex offender. I'm like, okay, I, I kind of knew that. But then when everything came out, like on social media, like on my Instagram, I had this one friend named um, Donna, right? Shout out to her. She have a, a, a clothing line called Drugs. All the celebrity wear her clothing line from Snoop Dogg to DMX to, to Nipsey Hussle. She's a big thing. So she ended up reaching out to me because she heard my story. And she shared her story with me saying that she was raped by a police officer. And she sued and won. And she was telling me certain things because she said, you know, he was trafficking girls and all these things. So she told me there's a way to find out if somebody is really on the registry. Because she said sometimes they be on the online list and sometimes they're on the call list. So I'm like, oh, I never knew that. So I'm like, she said, call New York since that's where he got arrested at. Girl, I called New York registry, gave his name and his date of birth. And they said, yes, this nigga is a registered sex offender till 2025. And yes. New York, New York, but listen, that's where the catch comes in. I asked the lady on the phone. I said, I looked him up online. Why didn't I see him? She said, because he is a level one sex offender, level two and three. They go up on the internet, but the level one sex offender, you, if you call in, they will tell you, but they don't put them up there. So he knew about that loophole. So that, that's what, 
doing with the girl that was trolling me. So he showed me that, like, see, she lying on me. So now I'm like, you lying on me. You lying on me. But I have police reports on my page. Like, you could see the officer saying it out his mouth. Like, how you going to not believe that? And I even, and when I called the registry, I recorded it so they could hear me asking the woman on the phone. I even asked her how old was the victim? She said under 15 years old. The victim was under 15. So I have all that on recording. Where he at? He's in Philadelphia. He might be somewhere else now because he know Philly looking for him because he know that I, t I told. He know we're on to him because we know that you really is a registered sex offender like you are until 2025. You're going around telling women that you don't do these things and you do and you prey on young girls you you tell them you 20 something years old and you all the girls that he talked to is like in their 20s each and every one of them young girls hey mocha what it is i think that's what it is yeah bipolar something because he's just like you, you don't know who you're gonna get like he's weird like and even the thing Hold on, hold on. So let me let me just get this out. So after all of this, right? Somehow his brother ended up following me on Facebook, right? And I didn't even know that I was his friend for like a good four months before we even started messaging each other, you know. And he was telling me he was like, yeah, that's the younger brother who was in the foster care with him. So he's telling me, you know, I'm asking him, did he get raped? Did he get beat when he was a kid? This is what he told me. He was like, no, he was the one that was doing raping. I'm like, what you mean? was the one doing the raping and I have all this in text so I, I have all my proof so he said to me he he was that he was living with a guy and they used to traffic little girls like they, it was more than one girls that was in that apartment and grown men will come in and out and pay him and the other dude to have intercourse with these little girls so the one day he went over there with his brother and he he said he's seen all these little girls in there and he dipped. He said, thank God I left. He said, because like a week later, my mom's told me that my brother is locked up for rape. So, and remember, if, if, if look, at him, look at him, he looks younger than what he say he is. So just imagine back then how he probably Played off as a 17, 60, 18 year old boy when he's really 23, 24. Because he was 23 when he got locked up. 24. When he was 24 when he got locked up. His brother said, Yeah, his brother said he was 24 when he got locked up. So you're going to be up his Yes, he was already a. But it wasn't even the weekend, but like, yeah, whenever like I had a photo shoot or something. Yep. That's the Instagram right there. His 
and his YouTube, his everything. He, he, the Instagram is pretty much active. Uh, Y'all can check it out. He's on Instagram. He's on YouTube. He, he would love the views. He would love the views. He told me any publicity is good publicity. That's, that's any publicity. And they say no, he's not registered. And they ask what was the last place that he lived and all this other stuff. So I gave them all that information. So he has not been he the last place he registered was New York. That that's the place he got locked up at. And you know what I mean? And did his probation or whatever that he was doing. And he just started moving state to state, taking women with him, having kids with it. Like it's crazy. It, and, and and another one of his baby mothers, I think she's like 48, right? We're like this too. We was pregnant at the same fucking time. My daughter was, we, our daughters are a month apart. But you, but you could tell that because she's an older woman, you could tell she have no, like, what was the word? Confidence. Like you, you could tell the way she carry herself. Like you could tell she's an older lady. You know what I mean? So it's like this young dude, because he probably telling her she be real young. So she like, oh, this young man, you know what I mean? A woman feels good when she feels like a man is back at her, like that. I still got it, like you know. So I feel like he manipulated her too, but she did say he did. He because she she told me her story too. We all shared our stories with each other. And it was all similar. It was all similar to the same thing. And he have an 18-year-old son that reached out to me. Right? Yeah, you there, honey? After the whole, after, after everything, and I was in Atlanta. 18. At the time, so he like 20 now. saying that he his mom don't speak to him no more and I'm like why he was like because he was trying to have a relationship with his father and the mother was telling him not to and he didn't listen because he still want to know who this you know know his father and he was like he regretted because every time he tried to reach out to him he gets nowhere he say he said he hates his father he said that he hate him that man don't reach out to nobody but himself <laughs> Yeah, some people found me. I don't know. Like I said, everything was on social media. So, you know, people clicking. I was, I, I had it on Facebook and something called Fight Gang. Like it was everywhere. So they, they found me. He found me. You know, and I felt so sad because he was telling me all the stories. And I remember that same girl that was living in the house with the other dude that, that he was in. I remember me and her was in her boyfriend room. And he left his one of his duffel bags in there. And I was like, why he hiding his duffel bag in here? We went through it. It had a bunch of jail pictures. It had letters from that same little boy when he was like five years old saying, Daddy, I love you. I know you don't love me, but I still love it. Yo, we was sitting there reading them letters, tearing up. Tearing up. And then and then came to find out years later that this little boy was, was gonna find me. You know? Like that's crazy. I'm like, he's just destroying everybody's lives, women, kids, in all kinds of ways. Like, it's, it's crazy. And nobody's stopping him. I, I told the police, I told the, the detectives, I even called Steve Wokos. Nobody doing nothing. And he's just free to do what he wants. He's still manipulating women. A girl is pregnant right now. She just told me she's pregnant. She's pregnant right now. And it's like, he's doing it all over. Right now, she says she can't even reach him. She can't find him. So here goes another woman pregnant again and just left. Just left. Did you just keep it or get rid of it, bitch? Choose one. Nobody cares. Like, absolutely. Because at the time when I met him, I was in a vulnerable position. I was in an unhappy relationship with somebody, and that's the person I used to talk to. Absolutely.
correct. He showed me. He showed me that he was caring. He showed me that if we were together, these are the things I would do. Like he showed me that. And I believed it. And that's why when years after when we did rekindle and started being in a relationship, he was actually doing those things. He was cooking, he was cleaning, he was doing I didn't have to do shit. Like I swear to you, I didn't have to do nothing. And that's that's what I was asking for for my other relationship. And then it's like when I was talking to him about it and I got with him, he showed me all of that. So it's like he was definitely studying me. Yeah, after the, the incident when he called the protective child services and I told him it's over. Like we I'm not I can't forgive you for this. What else can you do to me? The next the next argument we have, what are you gonna do? Call immigration and get me deported? Like you got me fucked up. Uh-uh, I don't kill people like that. Like you 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 screw me. So I'm gonna stay away from you. Kids or not, I, I can't. I you have to know when to walk away. You just have to know when to walk away. If you love yourself, you you have to know when to walk away. And I love myself too goddamn much. I will walk away from any goddamn body. You hear me? <laughs> Daughter is three, and my son is about to be two. Because remember, I, I just had her, and then I got pregnant again. So she, she was like six, like six months when I got pregnant. Six or seven months. He about to be two and she just turned three. So they just a year apart. Girl. Yep. And, I, and it's still going on because girls randomly still messages me. You lying. Why would you do that to him? Girl, if you don't get your, your ass out of here, I have to make a whole live cursing females out. And post it to let them know who they think they're talking to. Because how can you just believe a man? Well, like, like I said, I get it. Because I had believed him too when he was like, look, my name not even, I believed him. So that comes like proof. Like, yeah, she's lying to me. Look, you can't find me. You're lying. She's lying. So I get it. I get it. They they, they riding for him. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Until they become a victim. And then they're going to be crying to me. You know what I mean? But I feel like this is why I like talking about it. Because... A lot of women, I feel like we go through a lot of things and we, we feel ashamed to talk about it. We feel ashamed to say we made it. Like I really want to look in his face and be like, "You told me to rape these these kids." Like I know I have to say, kids, you got locked up for one because you got caught for one. But I know you fucked a whole bunch of them. Like you were sleeping with these kids. Like I want to look in his eyes. Yeah, yeah, Oh, 
Oh, I forgot no five, my bad. Exactly what I was thinking. That nigga is better off as an SSI check, bitch. It's a certain yeah, yeah. point where a nigga yeah. is worth more as a check than he is as a liability. Like, yeah, it's all that. Also, right when the same mother who who's posting on social media, she she's crazy. Like she be literally paperwork crazy. I'm gonna put her in and out, and she tries to kill their and her. She tried to light the house on fire. So and called him and told him they want to give um I guess they want him to be a part of him. I don't know but he was called to court and he never went he said he's not he's like, he don't want to be a part of it like, and he was like oh my God, I'm like hey, what, what listen, man. listen man ain't no such thing as you don't want to be if you get if you can't give your ass a court date to come to court, bro. You gonna come to court, or you just gonna be on the run for the rest of your life until you, till they catch your stupid ass. You can't just say, "Oh, I ain't want to be a part of this. I ain't going to court." That shit don't work like that. Hell no, they coming to you. Don't crowd, don't crowd coming to get you, boy. Fuck, fuck you talking about? Don't crowd, you ain't just gonna. Oh, 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 I don't want to uh, 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 deal with that. No. No crowd coming to see whatever address you got or whatever address you writing down, whatever check you cash. Like, no crowd coming to get you, man. I just got a state penitentiary, man. <laughs> if we did a little trap for real with it. Yeah, no right. Get you, man. No crowd coming to get you out. Check your mouth. No crowd coming to get you out. 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 No crowd coming to get you Talking ain't gonna play with you. This shit don't work like that. Oh, you just oh I I ain't going to that court date. Oh uh, no, you, you okay? Don't go to that court date, stupid boy. Crowd gonna crowd got a trick for your shit. I do. You want you to you your just, baby daddy get off in 2025? Mine is a registered violent sex offender for life. Fuck out here. Yeah. And you crowd, you crowd not gonna play. Ex husband is in prison right now for rape. Yeah, I feel you, though. Bro, listen. I ain't got no story, bitch. I tried to kill that nigga. <laughs> I ain't got no story. Yeah, bro, that shit would've went left. Off oh, for real. That shit would've went left. I should have went little. I would probably scrap in the head. If I was a woman with y'all, I would stab in the head. You stab me for that couple in the head. No, man. man. Oh, no, it was levels to that shit. I got a restraining order. I was scared. He was throwing hey, look. self-defense. You got I understand that. That's why I said if I was her, I ain't say. What well, she should have did, I said, I put, I put myself in her shoes. I will stop shooting his stupid ass. No cap. Go lay down for something. That meant something. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no bitch. It ain't, it, you know. Oh, the trap on that one. Happily, like he's just living his best life right now. He could do this shit and get away with it. He he's, and he's doing it and getting away with it. No, the fuck he not, bro. No, the fuck he not, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's just. Yeah, we just woke up that karma, honey. Yeah. 
Because I had a chain with like three stones that I had personally um, like wrapped in, in clay. And it was like real pretty. It was three of them wrapped around my neck. And I wore that for years. I my spiritual work when I worked in the spiritual shop for four years. I really used them because my energy was huge. I left that shit at his house. And I messaged him. I said, can you bring it? Off? He said, yeah, call me tomorrow. When tomorrow came, I was locked. So he has that. And whether he threw it away or he kept it, you're, he's cursed. Like, he is, that don't mean shit. But that don't mean like, that that means, work. like, you can't be playing with people. Like, you keep crazy with that. That nigga ain't crazy at all. That nigga ain't crazy. We crazy. No, that nigga crazy. That nigga ain't crazy. Man, these nigga be putting on me. Like, yeah, he. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> that nigga. Yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I need a drink, messing with y'all. Answer. We fuck with our answers. I say we fuck with our answers. All these trolls over there. <laughs> I need trolls too. Trolls coming. In, they need to go over there. Just that whole store had me mad, and I couldn't say that. Hey, you gotta go to the Got to get the hell out of here. I try to hit the time out on y'all. I want to say something like, I don't want to. <laughs> Hold on, time out, time out, time out. We got to we gotta do something to this fucking dude. <laughs> I know, right? I was with you. I, I knew that's what your ass was going to say. 